Hey, all right, here we go now. Hey, everybody, Lee Lowell here from smartoptionsseller.com. Welcome to our Saturday synopsis for Saturday, February 5th, 2022. What do we do here? We look at charts. That's what we do. I've been in the business for 30 years. I'm a technical analyst. I'm a chart reader, chart watcher, whatever you want to call it. It's what I use to help me time my trades, get in and out of trades. So I'm here to, to show you what I do, what I see, and try to help you become a better trader with these videos. So what do we do? We look at charts, we look at individual stocks, we look at indexes, we look at support and resistance, we look at technical indicators, try to figure out what's been happening in the market, what's been or what's going to happen in the future. Not a guarantee, no individual in, individual investment advice here. All opinions are, are my own, so just take that with a grain of salt. But anyway, let's just jump right in and, and see what see what's been happening. We always start with the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. On the screen here is the chart that I look at. I look at a daily chart for the most part. Daily chart is one day's worth of trading for each one of these lines that you see on the chart. This scans about two years worth back in time. I only have a few indicators on the charts. I have a couple moving averages. I have a 20 day, 50 day and 200 day moving average, all simple moving averages down here. I have the RSI, which is an overbought, oversold indicator. And it, if you've been watching for a while, you may have noticed that I move myself, uh, my beautiful little self right up here in the top corner. I used to be down here. Someone asked me this past week, maybe I can move the, move the video here a little bit to a different spot. So trying this one out, let me know if, what you think. Anyway, RSI, 14 day RSI. I have the 80 and 20 levels as my overbought, oversold areas. And you'll see on the charts, I have lots of markings. I have channels. I have patterns, you know, resistance levels, support levels, triangles, all these different things that you'll see on the chart over time um, when, I, when I pull them up. So let's take a look at the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. I, I, I believe it's, it gives us the best overall view of the whole market. So what's been happening? If you were here with us last weekend, this was our trading week all of last week. These five days right here, very volatile, very large intraday swings right here. The market had been coming off since the beginning of the new year, January. Let me just check the date here. So January, right? Yep, January, first week of January right here. We had this big kind of waterfall down move, quick down move. And you'll see most of the time as we talk about the market stair steps its way higher and then takes the elevator down. You'll notice that when we have down moves, they're very quick, very painful for some people. It happens very quickly and that scares a lot of people. You spend all this time going up and then just in a couple of days, it gives all those gains back. So that's, you know, something that you'll have to fight with in the market if you're a shorter term trader. You know, if you're a long term trader, I talk about this all the time. I'm long term. You know, I'm in the SPY. I buy the SPY for my long-term portfolio, buy on dips, buy on pullbacks, buy, you know, during the month to have long-term holds. So over the long term, we're talking years and years, the market's going to go up. But if you're a short-term trader, and I'm talking days, weeks, maybe even a couple months at a time, you're going to have to contend with these these larger pullbacks. If you're if you're bullish, these pullbacks hurt, right? You know, intraday traders, all this chop can hurt as well. You can get whipsawed back and forth. So it all depends on what kind of trader you are, and, and that will determine your results as well. I'm long-term in the SPY, but, of course, I run the newsletter, our newsletters, I should say, that are shorter term, a couple months at a clip. But one thing that we always try to do is, and this is going to be a theme today, is we try to trade in between earnings announcements. So most of our trades are not more than three months because companies announce earnings every three months. And I never want to hold a position over an earnings announcements. And I think a lot of you may have seen why this week we'll take a look at some of the big movers from their earnings announcements this week. So if you're a shorter term trader, you got to be careful of those earnings announcements. Always have to know when the company's announcing their earnings because you may have a position on and you can get totally wiped out. So we'll look at some stocks that had big earnings this past week. But anyway, so here we were last week, all this movement right here. And, you know, I'll just pull the chart back. So this is this is what we had. This is where we were last Saturday when I was looking at the charts. And I said, you know, there's that I, I, I you know, here's the 200 day moving average right here. You know, this is the biggie. This is the granddaddy. And most of the time when you have a big move in the market and it goes below the 200 day 
support moving average, it, it, it won't stay down for long. I mean, that's a big move. Um, you know, that's there's great opportunities in cases like this after a market falls pretty big like that. And the large players, hedge funds, mutual funds, you know, investment banks, they have to be in the market. They, they have to be in the market. The stock market's given the best returns out of any asset class. So they're not going to stay out of the market for long. And when you have an opportunity after a big sell-off like this, they're going to be bottom fishers. The people are going to buy it back up. But there's also the case where we could have had, or we could still have this one huge washout. I talked about it last week. The one big one day down move where everybody just throws in the towel. And that's typically where the, the bottom is made. So I said last, last Saturday, right after here, I said, you know, I, I, I don't see this staying down here for too much longer, but we still could get that washout or we could move right back up. I, I was a little wishy-washy, but that's where that's what happens when you have periods of indecision. You're not really sure what's going to happen yet. And that's fine. And we stay out of the market during times like that. In our newsletters, we were very light on our positions because we weren't sure whether that one day washout was still going to occur or we were going to get a move higher um, this past week. So we we're sort of on the sidelines. And what happened this past week? Well, we rallied. We rallied a bit. Monday was a great day. Um, and so uh, unless that was when Apple, I think Apple had their earnings last week. So that helped drive the market higher. Let me see what day this was. This was the 28th. Yeah. So this was last Friday. This was all last week. So we had a good Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. And then towards the end of the week, we fell back down. So I, I like, I like what I saw this past week. We got back above the 200 day moving average. Here's the 200 day moving average. So we're trading above it trading above it, which was good. And then Friday yesterday pulled back, almost touched it again. You can see here's Friday's trading, this one bar right here. And the the bottom of the bar is the low of the day. So it almost tagged the 200 day moving average again, but it stayed above it, which is good. So here we are right here. And I like how it finished above the 200 day moving average. That's constructive. This was a con nice constructive move this week. Got back above the 200 day moving average and held above it for the rest of the week. That's good. So we're still a little light. Want to see what's going to happen. Let's take a quick look at the um, NASDAQ because that's where a lot of the activity and a lot of movement has been occurring. Large, large swings. And you can see I've marked up this chart pretty good. You know what? Let's take away some of these because it can be distracting by seeing all these channels and other channels within the channels. And I'll even take this last channel away here. So we kind of have a, a cleaner looking chart to look at. So here's the NASDAQ. This is, uh, we use the QQQ, the triple Qs as, as our proxy for the NASDAQ. So had the big waterfall down just like the S&P 500 and had to move back up this week. But the, the NASDAQ did not make it back above the 200 day moving average. But, but, but that's okay because when it has big moves, it can catch up to where the, you know, the S and P 500 is above the 200 day. The NASDAQ could to get itself back up very quickly as well. You can see here it popped up. This was, I think Wednesday this week, but it came back down Thursday and Friday. And that's because we had some pretty large earnings that, you know, pulled us back down a little bit. So the NASDAQ still below the 200 day, not that that concerned about it. We, we still have that opportunity. We can have that one day washout. But the longer it, it remains above or close to the 200 day, we may not see that. Now, just going back to the SPY real quick, we see it's above the 200 day. And now let's look at the, the Dow Jones. And this is the diamonds DIA. Um, so this is the ETF for the Dow Jones industrial looks pretty similar to the to the S and P 500, it got back above the 200 day. Here's yesterday, Friday, uh, uh, February 4th, right here, this one bar, this is the day. So it finished above the 200 day moving average. Here's a 200 day moving average. a little dash mark on the right side of the bar it means the closing price of the day. Closing prices are very important, very important because it tells us where we finished for the day and, and whether, it was above or below certain resistance or technical indicators. So it finished above the 200 day moving average. So that's good. We like that. Um, our only concern is the NASDAQ, the QQQ. Um, and here, let's take a look at some individual stocks and see what happened. And, and, and let me 
once again reiterate why it's very important if you're playing shorter term, you want to not have at least large positions on before earnings. And let's take a look at stock number one. We'll go back, we'll go back to Netflix because Netflix was last week, all right? And you know, obviously we saw what happened to Netflix after their earnings. It dropped all the way down to $350 a share. It got super oversold on the RSI. So it did have a, a nice little bounce back, bounce back about $100 a share. But I mean, you have this big gap right here, this big air pocket. So, you know, if you were long or bullish or, or thought Netflix was going to have good earnings, you know, this hurt really bad. Okay, so that's that's the drawback of, of, of trying to hold a position over earnings. But But one of the big ones this week was was Facebook. Okay. So they had earnings the other day and you know, here's where it was before earnings right here around, you know, $323 a share. And then it just, you know, got knocked down, um, lost almost a hundred dollars a share. That's a huge move for Facebook. I think it's probably the largest move it ever had. This big air pocket here that hurts, you know, that hurts for a lot of people. If you have, if you had bullish positions on, so you got to be careful. You got to be careful if you're playing uh, earn the earnings game. So this is, and for those of you who, who may have bought put options, congratulations. That was, you know, a great move and you probably made a decent amount of money, but you know, that doesn't happen very often. I mean, earnings is a crapshoot. It could go higher. Or it could go lower and you could be wrong, pick wrong direction every time. Anyway, so you got this big air pocket. So you have, you know, mostly the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. So you got Facebook and Netflix just didn't, you know, they did not have a good earnings. Uh, but then we had Google, right? Google uh, nailed it pretty good too. They, they rallied a couple, couple hundred dollars um, after the earnings announcement went from here all the way up here, but it did pull back. But the big one was Amazon. Amazon this week, um, you know, let, let's take a look at what we have here. So Amazon's been in this channel for so long, so long it's been in this sideways channel. And then uh, what happened Thursday after the bell, they had their earnings. But before Thursday came around, let's pull this back a little. So it had dropped, you know, a couple hundred dollars a share it was trading at under $2,800 right before earnings. And then the earnings came Thursday after the bell and it popped it back up four or $500 a share. That's just a massive move. So you've got these whipsaws in, in Amazon. You've got the move down, the move up, the move down, the air pocket here, and then the air pocket back up. So that's just, that's some serious whipsaw right there. If we can look at the five minute chart on Amazon, just see what it looked like. So here we were, here we were Thursday at the close, right down here around $2,778 a share. And Amazon was looking weak. And I think there was a lot of people piling on buying put options, think it was going to just you know, have the big down move like Netflix had. And then, then it just popped, um, went from, you know, 2,800 all the way up to 3,250, got up to 3,300. Now, some of these long, these long tails here, those are, those are just bad prints by my data vendor here. But anyway, it went from 2,800 all the way up to 3,300, just, you know, a few minutes after, after announcing earnings. So that was a, a good $500 swing right there. And so Amazon back up, here it is back in the channel. So you got these massive moves. Um, and of course, Apple, Apple had their earnings last week, which pulled the whole market up that day, which was nice. So Apple has got back into this channel here anyway. So earnings, earnings seasons is, it can be a crapshoot if you're, if you're trying to play it, but longer term, we're trying to figure out, okay, what's the next, what's the next direction for these stocks. And, you know, we're still a little light positions are a little light. We're waiting for some of these earnings to get out of the way before we, we try to figure out where, where we're going to be with our new trades. So I'm, I'm always on the hunt for new trades, selling naked puts, um, safely selling naked puts on, on, on quality stocks and selling put option credit spreads. 
so what do we see? What do we see? So Apple, let's so let's take a look at Apple and try to get, gauge what we're doing here. So Apple had a nice move after earnings. So it's now back in this channel. And um, I think I think the only move up, the only move for Apple is going to be higher uh, in, in the long term. It's got some consolidation here. I think once the market uh, figures out it's we need to start going up again, uh, then Apple will start to go up, too. Um, uh, let's talk about Netflix again. And I know I'm concentrating on these big stocks because people want to know. I've got a lot of questions, emails this week. You know, should I buy Netflix on, on this sell off? Should I buy Facebook on the sell off? You know, what do you think? Well, I mean, there you've had some big moves. It got way oversold on the RSI. So, you know, you know, nibbling down here could have been a decent play because it rallied a, a, another hundred dollars a share, but then it's then it also pulled back fifty dollars a share by the end of the week. So you got the ups downs. It, it's whipsaw, right? You can get whipsawed out. Do you want to hold Netflix for the long run? I mean, if you do, if you're willing to hold for months and years, I'm sure Netflix is going to go back up. But if you're trying to do these short term trades, like one week option trades. It's too hard. It's too hard. This is a lot of damage has been done here. So it has to consolidate around these lows for a while to figure out where it wants to go next. And if it's time to go back up yet, you know, can can Netflix show us or prove to us that it's worthy to buy back up by it by the shares. So it and, and if it'll move back up, there's there's controversy, there's questions, there's, you know, after a big move like this, nobody's really sure what to do. So it takes a little while to figure out what's going to happen. And then I, I think eventually Netflix will go back higher. Same thing with Facebook. You know, people ask, should I buy some? I mean, it's it just fell, you know, $80, $90 a share. Maybe it's time to buy some Facebook and nibble at the bottom. You know, you try to pick a bottom if you want. That That's up to you. Let's go back to the monthly and see. Um, let me move myself here a little bit so I can get to the monthly chart. You know, where does Facebook fall on the monthly chart? Well, okay, so it's it's tagging on the uh, 50 day or 50 week, 50 month moving average right here. So it's the it's the 50 period, whatever, whatever chart you're looking at, whether it's a daily chart, one minute chart, weekly chart, the, it becomes the, the period. So this is the 50 period. In this case, it's the 50 month moving average. And it looks like Facebook just tagged a tagged it right here just came right in contact to it so maybe maybe it'll show some support you can see the only times that facebook's come down to the 50 month moving average here it and it popped pretty good so maybe nibbling down here as it's as it's touching the the 50 period moving average here might be might be a place to nibble a little bit you can see it, it, it bounced the other times so i don't know you know if, if that's your thing if you want to try to nibble at the bottom Eh, what the heck? You know, if you if, if it's not if it's not a burden to you, if it's if it's some money that you can afford to to play with, sure. You know, why not try to buy a few shares after a big move like this? You know, obviously this is not individual investment advice, so it's up to you to decide if that's right for you. Same thing. Same thing with Netflix. I don't know. Maybe you nibble a little bit and see what happens. Uh, but Google and Amazon and Apple, they all went higher. You know, they had good earnings. So we're in the midst of earnings season, so it's a little tricky. All right, let's take a look at some some other stocks. Let's look at AMD, which is another favorite of mine. Um, you know, we talked about AMD last week, which was, you know, right around here. Um, I had bought some personally as it came down to the 200 day moving average here. So I had bought some between 100 and 110 dollars a share in this little move here. And we had the nice pop back all the way back up to $130, which was nice, but it pulled back to $10 or so over the last couple of days of this week. But I, you know, I'm a fan of AMD in the long run. Uh, I'm hoping to try to get something going for uh, our newsletters soon after we figure out you know what the overall market wants to do we like amd and in terms of you know people ask me about intel as well i'm not a huge fan of intel you know i like amd better for in that sector and intel you know just crapped out again it looked like it was going strong here in this little segment here got above the 200 day moving average this little pocket of of trades and then it just got crapped on again so not a, not a big fan of intel as far as making trades yet 
I, I like AMD better. Let's take a look at Clorox because I mentioned that I had been getting into trades with Clorox and they had earnings that came out yesterday as well. And I think it's could have been one of the biggest one day moves for Clorox just, just got crushed. Okay. So I had mentioned that I had gotten long. We had talked about the big down move, the sideways action, ready to try to decide if Clorox was making a bottom here. I got in around the 175, 176 level, started tracking up. I thought things were looking good. And then it just started to come off again. And then the other day just had, it dropped like 20 something dollars a share, huge move for Clorox. I got out, I got out and I, you know, I took the loss just, you know, not all trades work out. So you got to make sure you know that when you're getting into a trade, you got to have a plan. You got to have your exit area. And I got out, I got out in here, somewhere around here in the aftermarket or the pre-market when it was trading within this range, we can go look at a, you know, one minute chart. You can see that, you know, here's, here was when earnings released and there was some trades happening in here. So I got in here in the aftermarket or the pre-market, I'm not sure what time it was. And so I was able to get out um, and I was able to get out. I, I didn't have to wait until the, the regular open because tr these stocks trade in the pre-market and the aftermarket. So you can always trade during those times. So I got out within this range in here in this air pocket range and you know took my lumps, got out. So you, you never know. And unfortunately, I, I did break my rule. I held over an earnings announcements, I thought that Clorox would, 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 would do better. And, you know, I broke one of my own rules and I paid the price, you know, nothing you can do. That was, that was dumb of me. And so it's just another lesson for me to learn. Even after 30 years, I took a risk, uh, and it didn't work out. So you gotta, you, you gotta be prepared for the lumps. Uh, what other stocks? Let's take a look at other stocks. Tesla, and I'm not afraid to admit mistakes. If, as long as you could admit mistakes, you, you, you can grow as a trader. All right. So it's okay to admit when you're wrong. Um, let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla still a, a, a fan favorite, um, kind of still holding this two, this 900 area level it did pop below it bounced off the 200 day moving average and came back above the, this support line very quickly. So, so Tesla is still holding above 900, sort of in this, you know, down channel here. Uh, but it seems like Tesla never wants to go down. Um, I, I still don't have a, a, a real commitment on, you know, what to do with Tesla. I don't make any trades on Tesla, except I sell some very few far out of the money puts every once in a while if they're, they're trading real high. Um, and, and, and another thing, if, if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen a post I made. Uh, Amazon's downside puts were just incredible. Amazon's trading $2,800 a share. One day put options, the 1,700 strike. That was the lowest strike that was listed. 1,700 strike put options. $1,100 away in one day. And, and the thoughts were, can, can, can Amazon drop $1,100 in one day? And these downside puts were trading for such high prices. It was unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. It was incredible. Um, I scalped a few, made a little money, but it, it's, to me, it wasn't worth the risk. Even though I know an $1,100 move in Amazon would not have happened in one day, it's still kind of scary to put yourself in that situation. You know, Amazon is a very expensive stock. Do you want to put yourself on the hook to potentially buy $170,000 worth of Amazon stock? But anyway, so that's what happens in, in the options market. But, but getting back to Tesla, you know, it's just fun to watch because it's so volatile and people love it. I, I don't have a, I don't have a stake either way. So Tesla trying to hold this $900 support line. That's where I see it right now. Um, if the market could get on its way back up the overall market, Tesla should follow to higher to the upside as well. Um, let's go through our list here and take a look at some other stocks. See what's, see what's good. Uh, if my thing will cooperate with me here. All right, let's, let's go through our list here. Let's see. Uh, let's talk about the VIX. Let's talk about the VIX again, because we discussed that recently as well. Uh, last week when, when we had the, that, that a few days of those, that, that very volatile back and forth on the downside, we saw, we talked about how the VIX rallied. The VIX is the fear indicator. When the market sells off, 
the VIX goes higher. That moves inversely to the overall market. So VIX jumps, that means the market's dropping. And when the market starts to rally back up, the VIX comes off again. So we note that the VIX has these quick couple day spikes, right? Couple day spikes. And if you follow the VIX, you know, once it spikes up, it's only a matter of a couple days at most before the market turns itself around and the VIX goes lower again. So if you're if you're a market watcher and, and you're and you're seeing these down moves in the market and you're wondering, is it time to buy? Should I, you know, should I nibble here at the bottom? Take a look at the VIX. If you see the VIX starting to retreat in the next day or so, you know that we the bottom that 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 bottom at that for that time is probably in and you can you know more safely buy stocks or or the indexes that that at that time because the vix going to retreat pretty quickly you can see all these spikes only last a, you know a couple days at most so you know you only have a couple days of pain in the market on these down moves okay so that's the vix let's see what else we've got going on um let's look at the let's look at the list again uh, Microsoft, uh, I'm trying to find some good, good charts to show you some, some, some patterns or, uh, Oracle, um, let's see what else we got here. Walmart. We always like Walmart. I like Walmart. You know, we, I, I've drawn the, the 135 level, what seems to be uh, near term support, at least for now. So every time Walmart's come down to this 135 level since, you know, about a year now, it, it has bounced. The latest one was this day. What day was this? This was the end, last day of January, and it's popped back up. So Walmart, you know, if you're looking to get into Walmart, you can use this 135 level as a potential buy area, you know, support level. Uh, let's see what else we got on the on the list here. Uh, Disney, like Disney, you know, Disney had come off. So it's still kind of lingering near the bottom, figuring out what, what to do. But I think, you know, in the long run, I think we all know that, you know, Disney's a quality stock. It's going to go back up over time. I've been nibbling on the bottoms here, waiting for it to go back up. Um, the healthcare stocks, Lilly, BMY, Pfizer, they're all... You know, a lot of these stocks are, you know, I'm waiting for the overall market to figure out where it wants to go. And then we can get into some of these other trades. Kellogg, Kellogg's come off pretty good. Maybe get into some support here. I'll keep a look on that one. Verizon still. Verizon, we talk about Verizon a lot. Um, been pretty volatile. Had been in this long down trending channel. I've talked about Verizon at length over these weeks. Waiting for it to move up had the bull flag here did go higher came back down but came back up again so now it's hitting resistance right at the down trending down sloping 200 day moving average the the slope of the moving averages is pretty important too it's down sloping that that makes makes it harder for a stock to to get through it but once the stock gets through it i want to see some action above the moving average you want to see some couple days worth of trading at least above it to to have some conviction okay maybe it's finally turning the corner so i'm not completely convinced yet getting close um it tried to get above it here and got knocked back down will it do it here or will it get knocked back down so i want to see verizon get you know maybe above 55 close to 56 dollars for a number of days before i can say okay maybe it's time for a higher probability trade of getting into Verizon, <clears throat> excuse me, but you know, while a stock's in a downtrend, it, it's not, it's not good to get a full on position because it could keep going down. It could just keep, could keep going down. Why, why put your money out there, uh, before the market's ready to tell you it's time that it wants to go higher for, for the long term here. All right. So let's see what other stocks we got, um, on the list here. <clears throat> Um, oh, PayPal is another PayPal and Square kind of disappointing to me that they've been coming off so much. I also am long some some PayPal shares here getting very close to to me stopping out. I, you know, I thought the sideways action here was going to take us up and through and it's just been falling. Um, I got a very, very, very small position. Nothing to, you know, write home about. A little disappointing. I'm hoping that we, we, we're going to see that this is the bottom here and rally back up. If not, then I'm just going to get out of my little teeny position because it's not worth me holding on anymore. But I, I know for the long run, um, PayPal and Square are 
you know, these are the biggies in the, in the payment space. Look at this, look at this downtrending channel for Square. You know, it, it did get oversold here. It popped back up just a little bit, but came back down again. So uh, I would wait to see Square come out of here. PayPal has already made the down move. You know, I, I'm going to hold for a little bit longer just to see because I do like the sec sector. Maybe I'll just hold for a long period of time, but it's a very small position for me. Let's see what other stocks are on the list here. <clears throat> Um, ba, 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 ba. Costco, McDonald's, Pepsi, um, Pepsi has been pretty strong. Pepsi has been kind of hugging the, you know, the 50 day moving average filing support at the 50 day moving average. Pepsi has been, been a nice, nice, slow moving, um, up, upswing. Pepsi has been pretty strong. So if you've been along Pepsi, that's been good for you. Home Depot. Here's Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. Twitter. Um, another one about Twitter, people ask me, um, uh, because you know, what happened was Facebook came off and then all the other, um, social media stocks got hurt a little bit as well, but Snapchat had a nice move up. Uh, you know, after Facebook came out, here's Snapchat came down trading just below 25, looked like it was just going to just get crapped on, but it's earnings came out and it rallied really good. So you never know. You never know what's going to happen with these this, these stocks. This is Snapchat had a nice bounce back. Twitter, let's take a quick look at Twitter. Twitter is kind of still in this the downtrend. It's just in a down move. Are, are you willing to pick bottoms and try to wait and see if it goes higher and just frustrate yourself? It's hard. You know, you want to wait to see when stocks start to move back up. And, you know, I still do this as well. Sometimes I try to pick bottoms, but, you know, I'm aware of the risks and I should, you know, always remember my rules. Don't trade over an earnings announcement. You know, if it's a short term trade, if I'm there for the long haul, it's fine. When I buy the SPY for the long haul, I know there's going to be dips. But when you're playing with individual stocks, the, the risk is much greater because you have these the chance for these nasty, nasty, large moves and earnings. So that's why I, I like from a long term to be in the SPY because it's it's got 500 stocks in it. So one bad move by one stock, uh, you know, won't, you know, kill the whole investment. But when you're playing with individual stocks, you have to be a little bit more careful. So Twitter still in down move, maybe trying to make a little bit of a sideways action here. I'd wait to see it start to curl higher, see the price action moving up before maybe I'd get into Twitter. So, you know, not much happening for me on Twitter. Uh, I'm not making any recommendations on Twitter yet. Um, let's see what else we talked about. Facebook, Google, we looked at, um, so GameStop, AMC, you don't really talk about those much anymore. I still have them on the list. That's, you know, I think that their time has finally come, you know, here's AMC. It's just been moving down. Uh, the Bitcoin stocks, Riot, uh, Mara, you know, but it's just following Bitcoin. Bitcoin has actually been going up of late, which is good. So, so Riot and Mara had some little up moves the last couple of days. Peloton still down in the dumps. Um, I talked about Clorox. Coca-Cola, always still a solid player I have for my long-term portfolio. Let's look at Coke and then wrap this up. Um, Let's go out to the monthly chart, see where Coke's been monthly. So Coke, just nice. All Here we got all-time new highs this past week in Coke. Really nice. Uh, go back to the daily chart. Here's Coca-Cola. I'll move this over here so we can all know what it is. All-time new highs just hit on, looks like Thursday this week. You know, it's a great dividend stock. Just a kind of a slow mover. You know, these are things that you want to have for your, for the long-term holds. Nice, slow, steady moves over the long-term. Um, all right. Well, that's about it. You know, let's look at the SPY one more time. Wrap it up here. For us, for the most part, newsletter, we're still kind of in that holding pattern. Want to make sure that the, this 200-day moving average is going to hold and see the market bounce next week possibly uh the the qqq is really the the only wild card here because it's still underneath the 200 day moving average you can see it here it's below the 200 day moving average but you know a couple big moves and a couple big stocks can can pump it right back up and and move it back in line with the with the dow and the s p 500 so which ones are going to win out is is the s p 500 and dow going to pull up the nasdaq or is the nasdaq going to pull everything else down with it you know these are 
a lot of these stocks have a lot of weight. You know, these these few stocks in the NASDAQ, at least, you know, you got the Facebook and Amazon, Google, Netflix. They all have a huge influence on the on that index itself. So big moves by just a small handful of stocks can really move the market. So if those stocks could get, you know, off their butts and start to move higher, this the NASDAQ will catch up very quickly to the Dow and the S&P 500. So we'll see. All right. That's all for for our little Saturday synopsis here. Let's take a quick look at our website smartoptionseller.com go to our website um, we always talk about put selling that's what we do here's our put selling basics free guide you can put your name and email address down here or anywhere else on our website each page has one of these little little things here you can put your name and email address we'll send you a free copy um, because that's what we specialize in put selling we love to sell puts and we sell put option spreads here's our services here we have two newsletters and our coaching sessions if you need help all right, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, ask me a question, send me an email, love hearing from you. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like. You can hit that red subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of this YouTube video. All right, that's all for me today. Um, I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.